welcome to Lose Framing Podcast. As always, I'm Jesse Brock, and with me today we have a very special guest host, Caleb Krasner. Hi, everyone. Caleb Krasner is our fall intern for Film Tampa Bay. All semester long, he has been helping us edit all of our Spotlight series, and we thought we would bring him along to host a very special podcast featuring two pretty established photographers in the area. Oh my goodness, it was so exciting getting to talk to Jimmy and Maria. They are so talented and full of great advice. I'm so excited for you guys to see it. Yep, you've done some photography yourself too, right? Yeah, uh, so I started with portraiture in high school. That's what drew me into photography. And then having gotten to the university level, I was asked to shoot some events for the USF ambassadors in addition to some other clubs on campus. And then I was like, wait, this is something I'm kind of like good at and I love doing it. It makes me feel good. It's a, ne- a needed thing for a lot of clubs on campus. And it, it feels good being in that like kind of position where like you're helping out all of these like local um, organizations and so getting to talk to people who do that professionally as a career is really amazing and I love that I had this opportunity. That's awesome. Well stay tuned guys we have a great conversation coming up. Welcome back. Hello, everyone. I'm Caleb Krasner, the current intern for Film Tampa Bay. And today I'm joined by the amazingly talented photographers, Jimmy Fashner and Maria Garcia. Um, Just a little bit of background on me. I started with some portraiture photography throughout high school. And since getting to college, I've done a little bit more of event photography and with this internship, some location scouting. So I would love to learn a little bit more about what you two do in your own uh, shooting styles. My name's Maria. I am the social media coordinator and photographer for Fresh Kitchen. And I'm a photographer and I work for Visit St. Pete Clearwater. I'm the interactive content specialist there. Uh, I uh, manage their social media and create a lot of the content you see uh, on their social media. So I'm super excited to geek out with you guys. And I would love to know, since I use a Canon EOS Mark III, what kind of camera equipment that you guys use and what kind of gadgets that you tend to use on the daily? Hmm. So I, I've i had my Canon 60 for a really long time, basically since I started at Fresh Kitchen. I got that job and I was like, I need a full frame camera. That was like kind of like my my little goal to get a full frame camera. And I've had it for a while. Uh, it's a great camera, and the lenses I mostly shoot with are a 24 to 70 2.8. Uh, it's just the so versatile and lets in a lot of more a lot of light. Um, and sometimes for portraits, I know you like portraits. Um, I do uh, my 85 millimeter 1.8, which gives me like a really nice sharp focus and. You know, it, it like blurs, blows out the background so nicely. I love that. Yeah. So I shoot with a Nikon Z6, so Nikon's mirrorless uh, camera. And um, I love it. You know, anytime I break out one of my old DSLRs, you know, it's just so clunky and big. And yeah. I just love the the mirrorless uh, camera. I just love how, uh, you know, compact it is. And, um, you know, and everything's digital on it, which I just love. So um, yeah, that's that's the camera I shoot with. It goes with me pretty much everywhere I go, which, you know, with it being so compact, it, it makes that easy. But I have various lenses. Uh, I think, um, you know, my favorite lens right now would be uh, a new 24 millimeter lens that I, that I just got, a new Z lens, one, uh, 1.8, and um, just a great lens. You know, I'm, I'm finding that, that prime lenses are just so much sharper than, mm-hmm. than um, you know, uh, other, other lenses. And, um, so I'm just really enjoying that lens, but I have a, you know, a whole bag full of lenses, not, not all Z lenses. Some of them are, um, uh, you know, aftermarket lenses that need adapters, mm-hmm. which is kind of a, a pain, but, um, uh, I'm working on, you know, upgrading to, to all Z lenses, but uh, I just love that camera system. And I've always shot with Nikon, even since, you know, the first camera she ever got me, uh, you know, for Christmas one year was an, a Nikon, I think D3200 is what I learned <laughs> to shoot on, yeah. uh, you know, crop censored um, DSLR. Uh, so I've always been with Nikon and, mm-hmm. and I, I was really happy when they uh, when they dropped that um, uh, that mirrorless camera because now I can kind of stay in that 
uh, you know, Nikon's, um, uh, you know, camera system. And I will say, like, his camera, like, when I upgrade, I think I'm going to, not only because we live together and we shoot together a lot, but, like, a lot of people are like, why do you have two bodies? Like, that doesn't make any sense um, to have Canon and Nikon in the family. Mm -hmm. But when I upgrade, his camera just blows anything I shoot out of the water, especially in low light. It's, It's gorgeous. So that's my next move, I think. Amazing. So you've kind of talked about how having these different camera bodies and lenses, how they've inspired you to shoot in a certain way Mm -hmm. um, in light or at a really low f-stop. So what are some other things that kind of inspire you? I think at first for me, it was, I think here in this area in Tampa or St. Pete, Tampa Bay area, it's really easy to start out with like our sunsets. And it was kind of the very first thing I I kind of learned how to shoot with was my my iPhone. And, you know, it's a wide angle on the iPhone. So um, that was just the easiest thing to shoot. It was beautiful. Um, It and and if you post it on Instagram, it's going to get tons of likes. So that was addicting. So I think at first it was that like our nature, our sunsets. And then I really got into, you know, my normal day life and like what I was eating like I love food um so that it goes in line to what I do now it's it's food and um and kind of it's it's what I love when I travel too yeah my experience is similar uh to hers you know it started out with with going and and shooting the sunset um and that's like kind of how it all began but uh I mean today you know the content that I shoot is um uh, you know, my, it's kind of all over the place, you know, um, everything from, you know, landscapes to portraiture to food, cars, uh, car. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, the content that I shoot is, is kind of, there's a wide range of, of different things. So, uh, I think that's, that's helped me, um, you know, in my photography career to, to kind of, um, you know, it's kind of forced me to, to dabble into to different shooting different things um, and hasn't really allowed me to get too comfortable, you know, shooting one certain thing. Um, so I don't know. And I also feel like I'm not particularly um, super talented at, at shooting one particular thing either. You know, it's kind of spread me a little thin. Um, but I think overall, it's made me a, a better photographer. So you both kind of mentioned new beginnings and sunset. And so this is kind of the question that everyone wants to know. But how did you two meet? And was a sunset involved? <laughs> Probably. I don't know if it was around sunset time. But um, I like when I joined Instagram in 2011, I you don't like join the group, but it was just like you kind of follow pages. And one of the pages was IGR St. Pete, which was a community page that Jimmy ran with a couple other people. And um, they would host Instagram meets where just a bunch of photographers would get together and literally just shoot. And it was like, you knew these people because you followed them Mm -hmm. on Instagram. So you were like, oh, you're, and you would call them by their Instagram handle, (laughs) even though they obviously have a name, but it was just, um, it was cool to meet a bunch of people that were kind of into Instagram, into photography. And uh, one of those meets, um, I met him and I had a boyfriend at the time. He had a partner at the time too. So we just, um, we became friends and later down the road, we just started dating and have been together ever since. I will say that there was a sunset involved on our first date. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. So not the first time we ever met, um, but our first date, Yeah. uh, you know, involved a sunset and, um, yeah, you know, it's it's not uncommon for us to still to this day, you know, head out to the beach. That's one of the amazing things about living here is mm-hmm. is you know that the beach is is just um, you know a, a fifteen minute drive away for us. Anyways, it's just too convenient not to take advantage of that. But um, mm-hmm. we still indulge in in some sunsets. Yeah, occasional sunrise, not as often as we used to. <laughs> I don't get up for those, but yeah, sunsets are a vibe. 
You've mentioned a little bit about traveling to the beach to watch sunsets, and I'm curious because you've also mentioned traveling, and I've seen it on a lot of your social media, uh, different locations you've been to. So has your love of travel influenced your photography or vice versa? Has your photography pushed you to travel more? Mm. I think photography has pushed me to travel more. You know, now in today's age of, of social media, it's kind of hard to not be inspired by, you know, other people's photography. And, and, um, and yeah, I think that's what's inspired me to um, basically travel and, and see new things. I think for me, I, I legitimately, I'm not lying when I say I plan my trips around food. So I, if I, if my friend goes somewhere and raves about the food that I know has like a similar taste or um, um, I see something on Instagram that legitimately looks enticing, it's just not like a Instagram, you know, because there are like things that people make for Instagram that, you know, are, might not be as good. But um, if I see something that really entices me, I will make a note and um, want to travel to that destination for, you know, that city and like, yeah, I'll just like plan around that. So I think, I don't know, it's food for me. Mm -hmm. It's all about food. And not planning just around food, but I mean, a whole trip will be planned around, you know, oh, doing yeah. the touristy things and yeah. getting photos. Yeah. Um, you know, New York City, uh, you know, it might be the, the, the edge, mm -hmm. you know, that we went and experienced. Um, the edge is beautiful. I've yeah, been. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll plan whole trips around, you know, getting that next shot. Yes, we do. So you brought this up earlier, but I'm going to kind of read it word for word because on your website, it's quoted, I never leave home without my camera. So with it being such a large inspiration and with you all the time, does it ever feel like work to you? Because I know sometimes you may just bring it even when you're not working. Yeah, it, it, can, it can be tough because, yeah, I do you know, carry my camera around on me all the time, um, for work purposes. And it's easy to kind of, uh, get burnt out, um, a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, when we head out to the beach to catch a sunset, it's, it's sometimes it's kind of nice to leave my camera in the car or just keep my iPhone on me and, and force me to, to, you know, shoot on the camera that, that basically started it all. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it can feel like work, but in the, you know, in the end, it's a good problem to have. Um, so, yeah. I don't think I have that. I'm sorry. I'm going to answer your question, too. Um, I don't think I have that problem just because my, you know, I my job is around food and that, you know, my, my brand. But um, personally, I do, like, kind of, I feel like, oh, I have to, like, capture this mm -hmm. for myself. Even though I don't post it, I just, like, have to have a moment captured. Um, but it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like it's for me. You did a great job because you did answer my next question, <laughs> which was for you, that um, does it feel like work to you. But I kind of now want to go into kind of the struggles with photography. So I know personally for me, if I have a shoot or two back to back, I always run out of battery. I always run out of storage space. And so I'm curious how you face those issues with having to bring your camera everywhere and having this be as part of your mm -hmm. career, um, facing those issues and then even beyond battery or storage space. Um, so I think, I don't know, like I always have just spare um, SD cards. Um, and I'm a terrible, like, I know people in my photography search circles that will like get home and they like, will organize their pictures and they will leave them in, backed up. Like, I'm not one of those people. I am terrible at that. And I have pictures on my camera right now from like October. It's terrible. Even though they're edited, I have them stored. I just like, I'm terrible at that. So I always have to have SD cards. And, um, I actually bring my chargers with me because I, I'm terrible at charging my batteries too. Even though like I will make sure it's charged for some reason, I don't know, I'll leave it or um, I'll have to stop by Best Buy to buy. I, I think it happens to everyone. Even like mm -hmm. the most accomplished photographers will right. sometimes forget those things. So it's just like being forgiving with yourself um, and just making sure that you like kind of have enough and like have one in every bag. I think that's what I have to do. Right. 
Yeah, I think with the experience, you know, I, I get better with that, but I still have my moments, you know, <laughs> just recently showed up to a shoot and <laughs> had all dead batteries. You know, I thought for sure I had at least one charged battery on me and I didn't. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's with experience, I, I get better prepared, um, you know, with shoots and stuff and, and, uh, you know, with, with my process, um, you know, I, I try to, um, you know, keep memory cards clear and, and basically, you know, with my new camera and the cost of, of, you know, the memory card that, um, is required for that camera system. It's quite expensive. So it's the only memory card I have at the moment, <laughs> you know, so I have to be on top of that and, and, um, be good about, uh, you know, formatting those memory cards and, and, and getting that content off and, and, um, onto a, a external hard drive somewhere. Um, so I think just with experience, um, I get better at it, but still not perfect at it by any it's means. Happen. Yeah. <laughs> so to take that a step further, what is your best advice for anything that can go wrong on a shoot? Um, I don't, I think the first rule, and this is important, is to know that you can't be prepared for absolutely everything. And if something does go wrong, it's just like find find a solution you're going to have to roll with the punches and and kind of figure it out. Like there's always something else that you could do or improvise and um you you can be prepared but you're not going to be prepared for everything. Yeah, I think I think it's important to control what you can control, you know, and being um you know, prepared uh the night before, you know, having your your camera batteries charged, your uh memory cards cleared. Um you know, addresses of where you need to be, you know, just, you know, doing the, the due diligence, you know, and, and being as prepared as you possibly can. But yeah, there's always a chance that, you know, something can come up and, and, uh, you may have to pivot and change strategies, you know, but that's stuff that's all out of, um, you know, my control, uh, you know, and if I start worrying too much about those things, it can really, you know, take me out of the moment um, from from being prepared and like stop like your creative process. That could really like mess you up creatively. Like when right. you're worried about all these things and like expecting something to go wrong, that's just going to mess. Well, that to me that happens. It just messes, um, gives me anxiety. It messes up with my creative process and you know just trying to be the best photographer I can. So we've talked a little bit about those kinds of mistakes, but what are some unforgettable magic? moments that you've created while shooting oh man I feel like this happens with FK a lot when um like we were just there to shoot a new item but like I also have my chefs there and I will say like oh you know what'd be great like can we just make like a, a small video of like how we cut or how we um, prepare this other item or um I'll just have someone like help me with um I don't know, like throwing juice, like to make a cool picture. I don't know. It's just like, and, and that always happens when it's not planned too. Right. Like if I'm planning to do like a creative shoot, I'm just like all in my head about it. It always happens when it's unexpected and I have a little bit extra time with, with mm -hmm. someone that can help me. Um, I can't think of anything else, like a specific picture, mm -hmm. but oh, fairgrounds maybe. Yeah, I can't think of a, a, a specific, um, you know, uh, time that, you know, where I haven't been prepared. And I, I just know that that things always seem to go a lot better than I expect them to, mm -hmm. you know. And, and um, you know, if I have, like, creative freedom to kind of do what I want, uh, you know, things always seem to go better than I, I think they are. You know, we, mm -hmm. we took a recent, um, visit to, to fairgrounds over in St. Pete, which is like this new all immersive type of experience, um, art exhibit, um, you know, and it was cool. We, you know, we had kind of a full range, um, to, to kind of explore the place and shoot it how we wanted to. And, and, um, you know, and it, it was a lot of fun and, you know, the photos, um, you know, it came out great. And I think, um, you know, they, they, they kind of, uh, you know, they, they were a good example of, of how, when we do have creative freedom, how, how, uh, good the, the, the photos mm -hmm. can actually be. So, yeah. 
Having mentioned the fairground experience, I know the both of you are very committed to your careers and to the specific position in shooting um, primarily for that, and you don't have a lot of time for those creative endeavors. Do you find yourself going to more events and more experiences like fairgrounds? Um, I feel like that specific event was because of his his job too. Oh, okay. Like, mm-hmm. I I that's something I would have gone to as well. But um, yes and no. I feel like if we are ever doing anything in the Tampa Bay area or in St. Pete or Coldwater, it's just going to be work for him. So we will be working. Right. So we do make time for those experiences like outside of the area to enjoy for ourselves but it would be in the same style of what we would be doing for for you know for work as well so i don't know it's it's more of a making time for travel for us i think yeah i mean it's a tough question to to answer and it kind of goes back to um you know finding that balance between you know work and and play and and uh you know, shooting the things that we want to shoot and, mm-hmm. and um, enjoy shooting and enjoy doing, but a lot of those things are mixed in with work and things that we already enjoy doing. So again, good problem to have. But I think I think travel goes back to travel again. Like once you know we uh, make time for traveling, um, that's when you know we're able to kind of separate the two and, and yeah. really. Um, focus on the things that that we really do love and enjoy Mm -hmm. doing. Yep. You kind of touched on this note, but I want to know what excites you about new projects uh, when a new client reaches out or you're working with Visit St. Pete Clearwater or Fresh Kitchen Mm -hmm. and some something new, something really exciting um, happens in that project. And what kind of part of that creation process do you like the most? Yeah, I think um, the challenge of it, you know, I I enjoy, um, you know, it can also bring a little bit of anxiety as well. But I know like once it's all said and done, things always seem to to come out great in the end, Um, you know, and and it it forces me to to try new things and, um, you know, do things that I normally wouldn't do. So I don't know, it's kind of just playing that whole tape through to the end and, you know, knowing um, what the outcome will likely be in the end. Um, so yeah, I like it when, um, for fresh kitchen, when we have like a new item or, um, we're opening a new store, those pictures, I know people are going to be excited for that content, um, like a new protein or a new veggie. Um, (laughs) I get excited over that and I know our audience gets excited over that. Um, so it's exciting for me to, to get pictures of that, film the whole process, roll it out, um, and ultimately post it and then have our, our guests taste it because, um, I know they're excited about it and that makes me, you know, want to post it, want to capture it, um, and do something creative with it too, like a video or, a illustration for it. So that's always very, challenging and exciting and i absolutely love that aspect of my job too i want to wrap this up with going back to the beginning and kind of where you've ended up now um you both kind of started on instagram and and now you've become fully fledged photographers with respective careers and so what is one idea or concept that you might have had before um you know 10 years ago that has completely changed since entering the photography field Oh. I think for me back in the day, I mean, and technology has, has changed a lot over the years and social media has changed a lot over the years, but I could, you know, see myself as, as, you know, that guy with a little shop selling little beach <laughs> postcards, you know, at, at John's pass, some cheesy touristy little that sounds adorable, shop though. that maybe <laughs> I retire or something, that. but like, um, you know, that's not what my career is today. You know, now that we have digital photography and, and, uh, social media, um, you know, that's just not like a practical, um, idea anymore really. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I never expected to to be doing what I am today. Um, so yeah, my my career has been very fluid, and uh, will probably remain so. You know, moving forward. So, yeah. um, you know, and who knows where I'll be in in ten years from now? You know, that's blown my expectations so far. So 
I don't know. I'm excited about it. I just keep putting foot one foot in front of the other and, and, uh, you know, doors, you know, continue to open. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I just, um, it blows my mind that this is a job. And, um, I always like, I'm, I'm the kind of person that's always struggled to find kind of like a, a thing to go to college for or like career or, um, what am I going to make money with? What am I going to live with when I'm a very creative person? So that was always very challenging. And when I was in at HCC, actually, um, I, I took a film photography class and, it was just like, okay, but I love this, but how am I going to develop this into something that is sustainable for a living? So just to sit here now and be talking about what I do for for a brand like Fresh Kitchen and um, that I get paid to do, it's just kind of wild. Like 10 years ago, that would have been like, if someone would have said to me, like, this is going to be your career, I would have been like, you're insane. Like, that doesn't even sound like, it's it's not possible. So... I think every, anything is possible and um, who knows, who knows what's gonna come in the future and it's exciting. If you had to give one last piece of advice to either your younger self from 10 years ago or any aspiring photographers to kind of follow in the same footsteps as you or look in a different direction, what kind of advice would you give? Hmm. I think it's um, important to, um, you know, remind myself to have fun with this at the end of the day. You know, I just think that's like most important, you know, if, if I have this mindset of, um, you know, I want to do this to make money at, you know, I feel like that's Mm -hmm. kind of like the wrong reasons. I think that's, that's kind of, you know, how my career has, has, you know, came to, you know, what it is today is probably just, you know, pursuing that fun aspect of it you know what started out as just a a hobby and passion project has has led into a career but it was because i enjoyed you know doing it and um you know continued to to feed that so you know with my spare time and and i know it's a little harder to do today to find that the time to do that fun stuff um and not to say that you know my career isn't fun because it is um it's just a little more demanding but i think you know doing it for fun because you truly enjoy it and you're passionate about it and um you know not forgetting that um i think that's gonna be kind of the 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 secret to it all yeah i i think for me and i don't know I think there's a lot of pressure f- to kind of like go on your own as a photographer, um, which I never like connected with. Like freelance was was always something really hard for me to do. And I when I was younger, it was like it's weddings or nothing. It's it's um, portraits of families or nothing. Like that's how how we make the money in photography. And I there's just so much more. And if I was younger, I would you know tell my younger self that like. It, just shoot what you love and and connect with what what you shoot and that's how your work is going to just f- be the best like with when you shoot what you love and um it just shows it just shows in your work you two have completely different shooting styles and i'm really curious about the individual challenges you both face in your own respective works yeah so um you know working for a dmo uh, destination marketing organization. Um, you know, it can be, it can be challenging because no two days are the same. You know, there's so many aspects to a, you know, a destination and capturing, you know, a destination, especially, um, one is dynamic, you know, as, as Mm -hmm. Pinellas County, uh, you know, we have amazing culinary scene. We have, um, you know, amazing beaches, uh, you know, great, um, downtown, um, areas, uh, you know, nightlife, you know, so, you know, no two days are, are the same. So it can be, you know, challenging, um, you know, because, you know, one day I might be, you know, flying a, a, a drone at the beach. Um, and the next day I, you know, I, I could be, um, you know, interviewing, you know, a, an owner of a restaurant, you know, and, and doing port- portraiture and shooting food and, um, or shooting events. Um, there's so many events going on in the destination too. So it's a wide variety of, of different types of subjects. And, and usually when I'm, you know, at an event, um, or at a shoot, um, um, you know, trying to capture, 
uh, the different elements of, of each thing. So even like within a shoot can be a lot of different types of, um, styles and, and subjects to, to shoot. So, um, so yeah, I mean, sounds like you have to be really versatile. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Um, for me, um, it's funny with food. I know people expect it to be super stylized and super, um, you know, use different things for different ingredients that are food um, that will make them remain like fresh. Um, I don't do any of those things. I always, I strive for our image on social media to be accurate representation of like when guests will go in, well, they'll experience hopefully something similar to what I'm posting, what I'm um, putting out there um, for, for our brand. So our food, I literally will make right off of the line. Like it right, I go in at 11 o'clock when we, when we open and the food that's out there ready to be served to guests, I will make my bowl with the same food. I don't, um, I don't, you know, add anything. I don't put oil on it. Like I just make sure that the same food that I'm shooting is the same food that's going to be served to my guest, and it's going to look accurate to to what they're getting. So yeah, and sometimes I do use um, special lighting, especially if it's going to go on. Um, you know, our training and our online um, ordering system that needs to you know look very commercial. And um, yeah, I, I shoot everything as is. Um, sometimes I use studio lighting um, when appropriate, but most of the time I shoot it as is. I want to thank you guys both so much for joining me today, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. That was such a great conversation. And here I am with Jesse. Hi. (laughs) Hello again. Yes, I would agree. That was an amazing conversation, especially for someone who wants to get their start and doesn't know how to do it. I just love how they were talking about how they use networking to their advantage. It was very, very cool. Definitely. And using social media platforms, especially as a networking tool, has become a norm. Mm -hmm. And I like that they had done that years ago. And kind of started that trend as well yeah yeah and now look at where phones are today right i mean people aren't using dslrs like they were but um but what i do what i really liked about them is that when they were talking about cell phones versus dslr cameras they didn't knock cell phone usage for photography at all which is kind of um you and i were talking about this is kind of a stigma with most photographers they're like oh everybody thinks they could be a photographer nowadays And they were more of the mentality of like, everybody can be a photographer, you know, you have the, you have the access right there in the palm of your hand, just take it and edit it and you could post it. And, you know, it's just about capturing moments. Especially nowadays with the quality of phone cameras having gone up exponentially. And they were talking about that five, six, seven years ago, back when iPhone and Android and whatever kind of camera you would use on a smartphone would be really pixelated and kind of lower quality and that's where they began and to think that anybody can be a photographer nowadays especially with these really high quality phones it's um a really aspirational mentality to have right it's like it can be there for anyone (laughs) (laughs) Um, anyways i kind of want to know where your love for photography comes from caleb um you have a little bit of experience with it i used to be really into like action photography my brother is a um independent pro wrestler and he has been for eight years so i used to take photos of his shows with Mm. you know high shutter speed low lighting so um you know i had external flashes and all that kind and that's kind of i like capturing moments where there's energy in the photo that's like what i get out of it either like someone laughing or someone screaming or someone like jumping or like that's that's my favorite thing to shoot but i was just wondering what's yours well i think for a lot of people it is about capturing memories and capturing emotions and fun and exciting things and because that's what we want to look back at that's what we want to be proud of and i think for me personally it stemmed from my love for film and television i just love the idea of capturing a story and i think that what pictures do so well is they capture that tiny bit of moment in time and you're like 
10, 15 years down the line looking back at it and all of the emotions come back to you about that exact moment in time and nothing quite does that like a picture. I mean, you can read about what happened at the time and you can replay those images in your minds, but actually having an image to look at brings you back into that moment. And I think that's what's so exciting about photography in general. Yeah. Do you print your pictures? So I actually got this from my grandma. She had about gosh, 20 to 30 binders of photo albums. Oh, that's and amazing. so yeah, growing <laughs> up, it would be around Christmas time or Hanukkah. And um, we would go back through all of the photo binders and just see all of the images of like when my mom was a child and all of her siblings, in addition to like me growing up. And it, it's super cool to look back at those family moments and pictures and be like, wow, like this yeah. is history. Yeah, there's something so nostalgic about just like capturing it, mm -hmm. but then also the act of taking a picture. Like my grandfather's, I've been, I've been the one to inherit all of these old school cameras that mm -hmm. I have absolutely no idea how to use yet. But you know, with the old school film, and uh, it's definitely something that I'm going to develop a hobby and dive into learning how to make them work because it's mm -hmm. so, and I collect like typewriters. So there's just something about like the nostalgia and like that time capsule of, yeah. of photography my mom know? collects the brownie cameras so we have like eight or nine of them just sitting in our house just <laughs> lined up that's really cute <laughs> but yeah i would love to learn how to use one as well someday yeah as you can see we both love photography so this conversation has been amazing with two very established photographers in the tampa bay area uh, make sure you tune in and listen for our next episode of loose framing podcast on pandora apple music and spotify and make sure you're following film tampa bay at film tampa bay on all social media platforms i'll see you guys next time thank you